I'm sure you've seen all the crazy stuff people are doing on Instagram and Snapchat with face filters. And guess what? It's actually not that hard to make your own. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how. Okay, first off for this tutorial, we're gonna be using two programs, Procreate and Spark AR Studio. Now for Procreate and the face paint feature, I'm gonna be using the 2021 iPad Pro, but here are some more iPads that the feature will work with. Now if you have an iPad that's older than this or no iPad at all, have no fear if there's another platform that you like drawing in or you just wanna use any random PNG image, just use the time code in the description to skip past our Procreate session and jump right into Spark AR Studio. I should also say that Procreate costs $10. Now I'm not being paid to promote it in any way, but especially if you have an iPad Pro, Procreate is well worth $10. It's so much fun to play around in. But again, technically you don't need it to make a face filter. Spark AR Studio is free and it's made by Facebook, which makes you think, is it really that free? Anyway, come on back here and we'll jump into Procreate. Okay, so first thing you do, you open up Procreate, brings you to this gallery view, and then up at the top right corner, you select this little plus sign, and down near the bottom, you'll see this face paint template. Now again, if you have an older iPad, that might not be there, and if that's the case, skip ahead to the Spark AR Studio section of this video. Now you'll see this neat little reference window where you can use an image from your camera roll, just use it as a blank canvas, but I wager, you'll want to use the front facing camera and get a picture of your own face. Now in the main section, these crosshairs represent your eyes, nose, and mouth. Now up here, you have a bunch of different brush options and if you click into them, you can manage even more of the finer details. I'm just gonna go with monoline. You really don't have to be all that artistic to start mapping stuff to your face. This one's a shout out to all the kids in town carnivals out there. We're starting a beautiful butterfly. With these controls over here, you can control the thickness of your brush as well as the opacity. So I'll make it smaller to do some antennas. Okay, so once you get it to a place where you like it, I'm not totally sure I like it. It's definitely scarier than probably what you'd get at the town carnival, but it's what we got. Now, once you have this, just to keep playing around and procreate, you can do all sorts of things. You can click options right here in your reference window, and then you can record a video within the app Hi, I'm a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. And then when you click stop, it'll be saved to your camera roll. You can also do the same thing, but you can turn your camera off and it just has your face floating in space. Let's say it again, shall we? I am a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. You can also do things like come up to this wrench, come to video and export a time-lapse video of your drawing. Just like that. Okay, if you don't care about getting your face paint onto Instagram, that's pretty much all there is to it. But if you do, follow me to my computer and I'll walk you through the next steps. The first thing you wanna do is share your drawing with your computer. In Procreate, we're just gonna to go to Gallery, select it, share. Make sure you share it as a PNG, which gives it an alpha channel or a transparent background. And then I'm gonna use AirDrop to my computer. And then once your drawing's on your computer, we're gonna open up Spark AR Studio, which I've included the download link in the description, it's free. And I've also included a link to download Spark AR's face assets. These are guides that you can import into whatever program you're using, and they're kind of scary, but they'll really give you the right proportions in order to make a better face mask. Okay, so we open up the program, and there's actually quite a few ways to do this. There's even this template right here for face mask, but I haven't loved the results I've gotten with it. So we're just gonna start from scratch with new project, blank project. And you'll see right away there's this looping video, this guy up here. And if you click up here, you can toggle through different devices to see what it looks like on certain screen sizes. But what this is, is over here, if you click this video button, you'll get all these different options of different looping videos you can look at. And this will let you test your effects on different face shapes, different hair, different skin tones, maybe different lighting. Or you can click on this FaceTime HD camera, which should say whatever webcam you're using on your computer. We'll click that. And there's my beautiful mug. Hey. Okay, so whether you're using your own face or one of the videos, under the scene panel, you wanna right click, add face tracker. Now your face is being tracked by Facebook. <laughs> 
and then right click again, and you're gonna add this thing called a face mesh. And you gotta make sure that the face mesh is underneath the face tracker. So now this checkerboard is attached to my face with cutouts for my eyes and mouth, and the checkerboard actually represents that there's nothing there. But let's call this first one, we're gonna right click it, rename it, smooth. And I should say that you don't need to do every one of these steps to actually get your drawing on your face, but I found that these steps just help fine tune it a little bit more. With smooth selected, you're gonna to wanna to come over here to the right and add a material. And then we get this sort of demented Jabberwocky mask right off the bat. And then down here under assets, you'll see a material was added. We'll rename that smooth as well. And then with that selected, you can come back up here to the top right and under this little drop down menu under shader type, we're just gonna select retouching. And then suddenly I got, you know, kind of a blurry shine going. You don't really see any of my pimples or anything like that. We're gonna leave that at 50%. And then we're gonna come back up here, right click under scene, add another face mesh, and make sure that it's under face tracker so it's parented to my face. We're gonna rename this one grid we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have it selected, come over, add a material, create new material. We're back to Jabberwockies while we're at it. I'm gonna come down here and rename it grid. And then with grid selected, under the shader properties, you can see the texture. We're gonna add a texture to this material. We're gonna choose the file. And more so that I can just show you what those face assets do if you're using a different program. We're gonna select the grid with tracking points. And then you see I kinda have this net on my face. If I get close, you can see all these points around my eyes and my mouth. Okay, now we're gonna add another face mesh. This is really just a face mesh how-to. And there we go, we'll get another look at the grid. Having trouble sleeping? Maybe I can help. All right, we're gonna finally rename this face mesh as Butterfly. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the grid. We're gonna add a material. We're gonna rename that material Butterfly. And then with that selected, we're gonna come up to Shader Properties, choose File, find our Butterfly, And there we go, the butterfly is on our face. I repeat, the butterfly is on our face. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna select grid and then under opacity, I'm gonna make the grid go away. All right, so then you see the butterflies on my face. It doesn't quite fit. First thing I'm gonna do is under the scene panel with butterfly selected, I'm gonna uncheck eyes and mouth because we already accounted for those in our original drawing. So it's not gonna have those cutouts for the eyes and mouth. Then, the very next thing I'm gonna do, and this is just a preference thing, but you'll notice that the color is not as bright as it was in Procreate. So I'm gonna come to these auto ambient light and directional lights, and I'm just gonna crank them a little bit to get this to pop a little more. Something like that. But then you can see it's not really fitting my eyes. So with butterfly selected, you can spend a lot of time moving it with these arrows that represent the X, Y, and Z axes, or you can play with the scale. It's really all about the time you put into this. And again, if you use those grids in another program, you might be able to match this just perfectly on your face. Once you get it to a point that you're happy with, you come over here to the left side, you see this test on device. And when you sign up for Spark AR, you're gonna have to link your Facebook and also your Instagram if you'd like. So you click send next to Instagram, then you're gonna get a notification on your Instagram account. <laughs> you're gonna get a notification on your Instagram account for you to test it. All right, I'm a little upset about that missing antenna and it kind of looks like a Spider-Man mask that you just found in your closet. You haven't worn it since you were a kid and it doesn't quite fit as well anymore, but still, you made this art. All right, and then after you've tested it, right below that test on device button, there's a publish button. You can record a demo video of your effect if you want, click upload, and then it'll pull up the Spark AR Hub. Then once the Spark AR Hub is up, 
You can give your effect a name, fill out some more information, and then you submit it to Facebook and Instagram in order for their approval. And then you should hear back from them whether or not it's worthy enough to go to the masses. And then your mom or your grandma, if she's one of those kind of grandmas, can wear your art. And I think that's pretty cool. I hope you had fun watching this video and I hope you're in the process of making some face art. Please subscribe to How To Do It All for a whole bunch of other how-to content. And while you're at it, I actually spent a day with the iPad Pro seeing everything that it can do in a single battery life cycle. You can watch it right here. Thanks so much for watching and as always, be excellent to each other. I had to do it again. Bye.